From east to west and from north to south, the sky is written all over. Liberty now I never. Liberty won by the white man would lose half his luster. He who will be free must strike the blow. Better to die free than to live a slave. Remember Denmark Massey of Charleston. Remember Nat Turner of South Carolina. Remember Shields Green and Copeland who fell as nobles with the noble John Brown. Remember that in a contest of oppression, the Almighty had no attributes for the oppressor. A famous speech given by Frederick Douglass, a noted abolitionist during the time in March of 1863 in Rockbury, New York. I am glad to be here, humbled to be here. And again, I want to give our awardees another hand for their effort. This past weekend, we had our Walk Through Living History Festival, and this is our second year of doing an essay. And I'll tell you what, Tallahassee School of Math Science swept the middle school. So that tells me you all are doing something great out here. I'm humbled to be here. I bring you greetings from the 2nd Infantry Regiment, United States Colored Troop Living History Association, and the John G. Rowley House Museum of African American History and Culture. Our mission is to preserve, protect, promote, and interpret the accomplishments of the many African Americans that fought during the Civil War and those abolitionists also that spoke out against slavery. I know I have only a few minutes to talk, so I wrote some things down. It would be kind of hard for me to do that in 10, 15 minutes, so I know how I can on and on and on and on. But again, I thank you for the privilege of being here. It's my hope that when I finish these few minutes that you will leave here with a better understanding of our history and how we got here during the Civil War. Hopefully it will prick your minds and want to do more, because I tell people every day when I searched and started this 10 years ago, when I started the 2nd Infantry Regiment, every time I turn over a stone, I see 10 pebbles, and it keeps going and going and going. Abolitionists, we all heard of Harriet Tubman, but there were many others. Mary Elizabeth, Mary Elizabeth McLeod, Matt McLeod. There was also Mary Elizabeth Browser, Susie Taylor. We've all heard of Frederick Douglass. One of the speeches that I usually do is with Frederick Douglass, and I always, I didn't know what type of crowd I would have tonight, because I'll tell you, when you're in front of a bunch of young folks, you get intimidated. Um, so I'm glad that I have some people that I can probably relate to, I'm sure. But you know, you just kind of alter your, your, your message and what you're doing. The speech that the one I just wrote was just a portion of Frederick Douglass' arms fight. And who represented the United States Colored Troops? Those were soldiers that fought in the Union. A lot of people aren't aware, weren't aware that those African Americans fought during the Civil War. The Emancipation Proclamation, what we talked about, all of us have heard of the Emancipation Proclamation. We'll celebrate that again also on May 20th, on Monday. We've been doing that each year with the great um, replaying at Old City Cemetery and a reading of the Emancipation Proclamation on the Knot House steps. But the Emancipation Proclamation, fundamentally, the Emancipation Proclamation transformed the character of the war, the Civil War. The proclamation announced the acceptance of black men into the Union Army and Navy enabling the liberated to now become the liberated. So it was on May 22, 1863, the War Department enacted General Order No. 143, which established the Bureau of Color Troops, allowing the formation of the United States Color Troops. This act bolstered the Union effort at a critical time during the war. There were many Civil War battles that were fought by African Americans, over 449, 36 major battles, one right here at the Battle of Natural Bridge in Tallahassee, Leon County, eight miles south of the Capitol right here. Since the time of the American Revolution, African Americans have volunteered to serve their country in time of war. The Civil War was no exception. Only the official sanction was the difficulty. The strength of the African American desire to fight for freedom was always there. By the end of the Civil War, over 209,000 African American men of color fought for the Union during the Civil War over 1,044 right here in the state of Florida. The USCT made up over one-tenth of the Union Army Union forces during the Civil by the end of the Civil War. These brave men played a significant role. In the uniform that I wore, we are a living history, living history unit. We reenact in living history. You know that knowing our history is to know it, but to see it in living history form is to truly conceive it. We wear the uniform. We, work in, we do it in first-person um, situations, first-person act. I played with portraits, first sergeant, 
Walker and Sergeant Major Harrison during that time. So we know that they played a very instrumental outcome of the Civil War, a victory that the Union and the help of the Union in the legalized slavery in the country. These soldiers that I speak of, they did not leave their families or their home to go and fight. They left for the God-given right for a family and a home, free of the tyranny and suffering of slavery. They joined the Union efforts knowing very well that they may not make it back home, but they also felt it was better to die free than to live a slave. And many a times when I look at who I'm speaking to and I sometimes I speak to children, uh, there's a prayer that the soldiers did, that they did one group, the 103rd United States Colored Troop, there were over 175 regiments, this is just one. There was a model prayer that they had that kind of touched and talked about the children and the families. He said, let me live so that when I die, I might have manners and I will know what to say when I meet my heavenly Lord. Let me live with the musket in one hand and the Bible in the other, so that if I should die at the muzzle of the musket, die in the water or die on the land, I shall know that I had my blessed Jesus in my hand and I had no fear. That I left my wife and little children in the land of bondage. I hear my little ones cry every night, where? Oh, where is my father? But when I die, and the blessed morning rises, my feet shall stand in thy glory. Bid one foot in the water, bid one foot in the land. And then, O oh Lord, I shall see my wife, the little children, once again. A model prayer that they said each time they went out because they did not know if they were ever going to come back, but they knew that they would see their families in heaven at the end. They joined it knowing very well that they may not. During the Civil War, there were 2,751 casualties on the battlefield. By the end of the Civil War, there were 68,000 Union USCT soldiers killed during the war. Many on the battlefield and many by disease as well. You know, it is impossible, and I know that you all are doing that here, it's impossible to make education, educated decisions about our future if we fail to understand our past. Revised history doesn't do us any good. History is what it is. But we must, and what we do is we reenact the history in hope of shaping our future, is what we do. There was a poem, as my time expired, there was a poem that was written by Paul Lawrence Dunbar, a Floridian. And it kind of summed up the story of the African Americans' fight during the Civil War. He wrote it in, in, in tribute to his father, who was a member of the 54th Massachusetts United States Colored Troop. Many have seen the movie Glory. That was the first time many of us ever knew that there were African Americans that fought for the Union during the Civil War. And he wrote it in tribute to him, and he wrote it in tribute to all of the United States Colored Troops that fought during the Civil War. And I'll end with that. It was called The Colored Soldiers Call. It said, the muse were mine to tempt, and my feeble voice was strong, if my tongue were trained to measure, I'd sing a soaring song. I'd sing a song heroic of the noble sons of Ham, those gallant colored soldiers who fought for the sand. In the early days you scorned them, and with a many a flipping flower, said these battles the whites and the whites would fight them out. Up the hills you fought and you fought, and in the vows you strove and you bled, through your ears they heard the thunder of a foe's wretched thread. When the stress fell upon the nation and the flag was drooping low, he said, Should thus for Luther finally know, the nation shouted no. The war and its savage triumph spread abroad its funeral ball. You called on the colored soldiers and the answer to your call. Like hounds unleashed and eager, at the light blood of the prey, sprang them forth and bore them bravely in the thickest of the prey. Where the fight was the hottest and the bullets fast as fell, they pressed on brands and feelings at the very mouth of hell. How they rallied to the standard to uphold it by their might. None were stronger in their labor. None were braver in the fight. From the blazing beach of Wagner to the plains of Velocity, they were foremost in the fight of the battle to be free. And at Fort Killer, God have mercy on the deeds committed there to the souls of those who were victims sent thee without a prayer. That the fullness of thy pity and the hearts were spirits way, those gallant colored soldiers who fell fighting that day. Yes, the blacks, they burned their freedom. And they burned it dearly too, but the lifeblood of the thousand that the southern fields be due. 
from the darkness of their bondage to the depths of slavery's nights. Their muskets flashed the bony, and they fought their way to life. They were comrades and then brothers. Are they more or less today? They were good to stop a bullet at the front of the faithful friend. They were citizens and soldiers when rebellion raised its head. Those traits that made them worthy then all those virtues, they're not dead. They shared your nightly vigil. They shared your daily toils. And their blood with yours coming has enriched this southern soul. They slept. They marched. They suffered. Beneath the same dark skies as you. They faced the fierce former, but they remained great and true. Their deeds shall find a record. In the registry of fame, their blood has cleansed completely every block of slavery shame. So all honor and all glory to those noble sons of hand, those gallant colored soldiers of the sand. That is why we cannot, we will not, we shall not, we must not, as the Second Infantry Regiment of the United States Colored Troops, represent those who, those battlefields that were shed with blood of African American manhood. Thank you. Good evening.